The Hoosiers have captured three national titles under coach Bob Knight. With standouts like Isaiah Thomas, IU's identity became intertwined with its basketball success. But in the mid-90s, fortunes tilted toward West Lafayette with Gene Cady guiding Purdue to three consecutive Big Ten titles and dominance in the heated rivalry with Indiana. The Boilermakers have celebrated wins in four of their last five meetings against their rivals from downstate. Don't expect Indiana to step aside without a fight. In January, Luke Recker derailed Purdue with a 27-point effort in Bloomington. But, Dick Vitale, that was Bloomington. This is Mackey Arena. I'll tell you one thing. You talk about Luke Record, Dave. He's a diaper dandy. He was sensational in that game. Had 27 points, 12 rebounds. In his last game against Penn State, he had 29. He's become a big-time slasher, and he provides loads of energy and excitement for the Indiana offense. If there's anybody for Purdue who has more than the usual amount of incentive tonight, that would be their fine center, Brad Miller. Well, I got to slow him down. He's kind of killing my hometown. He's 10 minutes from where I live. So he was my rival, his high school and mine in high school. So um, my grandma's kind of getting on me because the papers are really rubbing it in up there. And um, she and she doesn't get upset too often. She was pretty upset when I talked to her at Ohio State. So um, she really wants us to get this game and, you know, really shut Luke Riker down. Sums it up, you lose, grandma is even on your case. Indiana going for the sweep. They haven't had one in some four years against Purdue. Let's send it back to the studio. Purdue, to a man, the veterans on the Purdue team agree there is no other game on the schedule quite like Indiana. It's almost halfway full, 30 minutes before the game, and hate I, I hate IU, go Purdue. I mean, you, you see every, every sign possible will be up and everyone's just there a lot earlier and they get twice as loud with our, our locker room right there. You can you can just hear it right through all the way through the stands in the locker room. I grew up watching the Indian Purdue game, so my brother played for Purdue and you know, I watched the end of game like this. You jump a lot higher than what you normally do. You're running faster trying to trying to get out and you know, you just feel like you have 150% more in your body than what you can physically do. Indiana Purdue, Bobby Knight versus Gene Cady. I mean, we got A.J. Guyton versus Mr. Chad Austin. It'll be unbelievable. One of the great rivalries in college basketball. This will be incredible, baby. So now ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Russell Stover Candies. Nobody does chocolate like Russell Stover does chocolate. The madness of Matt Phelps, Purdue, five impressive wins since a six-point loss in Indiana three weeks ago. Well, it's a good night to rob a bank in Indiana because everybody is watching. Every TV <laughs> set is on in that state. They're crazy over this game. But in game one, Brian Cardinal got in foul trouble. Only played 19 minutes, fouled out in 19 minutes, was not a factor trying to guard gladness and record. And even though Brad Miller had 18 points, 15 rebounds, he was frustrated with the calls, didn't like the officials. Gene Cady was upset. So look for a different mindset from Cardinal and Miller tonight, knowing they've got to step up their game to stop the Hoosiers. Boilermakers couldn't hit threes. Now you tell me about the banks. <laughs> Too late to do anything about it. <laughs> Indiana Purdue, enjoy the first half. Let's get back at today and take a West Lafayette, guys. This one sold out since November. The 111th consecutive Big Ten sellout at Mackey Arena. 14,123 moments ago. The spots when the general Bob Knight makes his appearance on the floor as he does only once a year in the Indiana lineup for Knight and the Hoosiers brought to you by Circuit City A.J. Guyton 21 points somewhat in the shadow of Luke Recker in the first meeting who had 27 Guyton their leading scorer at 16 points per game 
And for Gene Cady and Purdue, Chad Austin in that first game, four for 12, only one of seven threes, only 11 points. I need more than that for him. Chad Austin, the leading scorer for the season at 17 and a half points per game. I'll tell you one thing, Jerron Cornell's been on fire shooting the trifecta. One of the premier three-point shooters now in the conference. He's been sensational, had seven recently in one game, David. So they're gonna have to guard him on the perimeter. Also remember this, in the first meeting, Indiana was nearly perfect. As you look at Cornell's numbers against Indiana, they shot 57% and they were better than 90% from the free throw line. As you look at Luke Recker, he was sensational. He was flat out super in that first meeting. And the people that have watched him all year when asked how will he react to this type of hostile crowd indicate probably not much different than he did at home. He seems to be immune. I'll tell you one thing about him. He provides a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm to the club already. Look at this. Expect us in San Antonio. But hey, guys, they haven't been able to get to the Final Four. That's the one thing missing from the resume of Mr. Katie. He's got everything else, but he does not have that journey to the Final Four. Oilers lead the series 100-71. to A four-game winning streak ended in Bloomington last month. Five of the last seven and four straight in this building have gone to Gene Cady, the all-time winningest coach in Purdue history. He has a chance tonight if he beats Bobby Knight. He gets more, more wins against Knight than anybody else, including our own Digger Phelps. I mean, if he wins here, he would beat Knight for the 18th time. He shares that 17 with Judd Heathcote. He could go to break even, in fact, 18 and 18 against Knight with a win tonight. I promise, Dicker can't hear me, so I promise I will not say that Bobby Knight told me today <laughs> at the shoot-around. He wishes Mr. Phelps was still coaching. He would put him in the Hall of Fame three times if he was still coaching. He'd break every record and wins. Only teasing you, Dicker. Oilers control the tap look inside for Brad Miller, something Katie says they need to do as often as possible. They need patience and as often as they can to work it on the low block where they've got the big size advantage at 6'11". Eldridge way long on the three, returned to him by Brian Cardinal. Eldridge has been on fire recently as well, had five threes against Wisconsin. Austin long as well, and so is Miller, but Miller draws the Andre Patterson foul. That's what they got to really work on, as you said, on the interior. Really work on a glass with Cardinal and also Mr. Miller with his size advantage on that interior. Indiana, though, has become a better club since the departure of Jason Collier. And the reason, more athletic, they've opened up the lane, and they really believe it has affected the play of Luke Recker. He has the ability to drive and slash for the basket. These are two outstanding shooting teams, and that's from the field and from the line. Purdue 76% leads the Big Ten and seventh in the country in free throw percentage. And Miller, even better than that, 79% for the year, and has the first two points for Purdue. You're right about that. Also, Indiana leads the conference in field goal percentage, shooting 51%. So we got two of the really outstanding shooting teams in the Big Ten. Michael Lewis. Andre Patterson. He's been a real mystery player, Patterson. Patterson starts outside, works back inside, and they will love to see him score from both areas. He can really help him out if his outside shot falls tonight. Cardinal, a terrific three-point year, 50%, in fact, from beyond the arc, but that one wouldn't go. He's more than just a Rambo man. Three-point try on the other end, and Michael Lewis has only his eighth three of the year. Five in a row put up by Indiana. Well, you know, Michael Lewis started off really slowly shooting the three. He's a big-time scorer in high school on Jasper. Had, had over 2,000 points on a scholastic level. Miller over Patterson and William Gladness. And Gladness outfighting Miller for the board and keeps it alive. Here comes Guy. Gladness gives him some athletic ability. He went the junior college route. Guy backs out for a three. I love this guy. A.J. Guy is one of the really underrated players in America. He's a premier super south. He had a great freshman year last year. 8-0 run by the Hoosiers. 0 for 5 from the field by Purdue. That's not the kind of start you want here at home. You want to come out early, especially after Indiana got the bestie in the first meeting. Gene Cady really working the blackboard today in the locker room. 
has his club really motivated. Lost a tough game earlier this year to North Carolina. Had Carolina beat with two minutes left in the game and let it slip by him. So this club certainly can play with anybody. Brad Miller hit with the personal. 8-2 Indiana after the two free throws by Miller. As Gladness now handling the basketball. Remember Dave, they went the Juco route back in 19. Then they won the championship 1987 when they went for Dean Garrett and Keith Smart. First time Bobby Knight ever went the route of the junior college player. This will be on Jerron Cornell. That yeah, worked out pretty well for him 11 years ago. They oh, love to yeah. see similar results here. When you saw Smart in that game against Syracuse hit that fadeaway baseline jumper to win it all. And they celebrated a Bloomington. Wrecker on his first sojourn underneath the offensive foul. Defense does a great job rotating over to take away the driving angle of Luke Rimwrecker. I mean, this kid is going to be a special player in the Indiana uniform. Here he is, an exciting player. A lot of energy, very athletic. There he is utilizing the left hand. Had a big game his last game at 29 against Penn State. Only game he's had better than the first against Purdue. Boilermakers, as you see, still looking for their first field goal. Cornell provides it with a left-hand scoop. He's from out of South Bend, Indiana, Jerron Cornell. Averaging 15 a game now, giving him a real scorer from the wing. Everyone was playing like a three-guard concept. Wrecker, another three for Indiana. Great start right now by Indiana to quiet this crowd. The wacky Mackey crowd is getting really silenced here by the early start. This one of the great environments in college basketball. As Mr. Intensity, look at him. Look at Gene Kenny working that sideline. Ron Zetcher walked away from him and now comes back into the conversation. There's a look at Cornell with that slashing move in the lane. Cornell shaken up afterwards, and that's uh, the source of Katie's protest with Ed Hightower over there to join Ron Zetcher, Tom Rucker, the other official, and Cornell will uh, slowly make his way to the Purdue bench on a terrific roll, 17 and a half per game over those last 15. Well, not only a terrific run, he's doing a great job shooting that perimeter three, and that really creates a lot of openings for him. See, there he is in the lane right now. Looks like he comes right there. He rolled his ankle. He rolled his ankle. Landed on Lewis's foot, and for the moment, they're without as hot a score as they've had. Cornell is replaced in the lineup by Mike Robinson. At last, a bucket falls, and it's Chad Austin who breaks what had been an 0 for 6. Well, also, Chad Austin's put on fire recently. He was in a little bit of a slump, but seems to have found himself. Gladness, nice spin, but can't get the hook to fall over Miller. Trying to get Gladness on the interior. Austin. Robinson, back to Miller, thought briefly about a three. He can shoot the three out there. Down to the baseline, and just like that, Purdue finding the range again. It's Chad Austin, and they're within three. Well, Austin won the basketball. I tell you, I look at this kid, and I can't believe he's not a superstar. Andre Patterson, I will never forget his performance against Duke in the NIT last year when he scored 39 and put an unbelievable one-man show. Austin coming up short this time. Fourth rebound already for William Gladness. Oh, what a nice look by Rucker. What a nice look. Great vision, 45-degree angle. Great execution of the transition game. Michael Lewis already with five points. You know, Indiana's won seven of eight. The only club to put a stop to Michigan State who's on fire under Tom Izzo. One of the real surprises in America. And Purdue, nine of ten, the only loss in that last ten at Bloomington. Tip won't go, second one, third one. Robinson turned away three times and it's knocked out to record. Hooker handles the ball well for a 6'5, 6'6 forward. Out of the cow, high school. Ed Hightower could call this on either Eldridge or Miller. If it's Brad Miller, it is his second, but it's going to be Alan Eldridge instead of break for Purdue, his first. I think of Purdue and not getting to the Final Four, and they had such a great opportunity in 94 when they had the showdown, the big dog Robinson against Grant Hill, and it was won by Grant Hill. Jerron Cornell trying to get the ankle retaped. They trail by...
We're going to take a look right now at Indiana's transition game right here. Freeze it. See, right now he's got looks. Here's the 45-degree angle he's going to get right here for the layup. You're going to see Wrecker make that pass, the dump down to Michael Lewis, and Michael gets the easy deuce. I could have made that, Dave. I mean, are you kidding me? I could have made that. And I was up to 2.30 in the morning at the post party at the ESPYs and left at 5.30 in the morning. Fine bit of choreography, by the way. I've been waiting to congratulate you on that from last night. Oh, I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Out of bounds off the Hoosiers. Six of seven, including three threes for Indiana. Purdue three of 12 and down by seven. I talked about earlier how they changed their look, Indiana, offensively without Collier. They've become more a slashing, driving team because they don't have a stationary post player. This is Tony Mayfield, who played in junior college in Tyler, Texas, with Rob Turner. He gives him a backup point guard. Miller is stopped by Andre Patterson. Patterson really has risen to the occasion early here in this game, both offensively and defensively. But Lewis throws it away, and it's a breakaway for Robinson. Michael Robinson is becoming a real Rollins man. Seems to like his new role coming off the bench. Lewis quickly up and deflected out of bounds by Miller. I'll tell you, you talk about rivalries, enthusiasm, and spirit. Last week we had probably the best in all of America, Duke and North Carolina. But right behind them, and not by much, is certainly Indiana and Purdue. I'm gonna say it. This is close, isn't it? And then it's Kentucky and Louisville. Great rivalry, though they're not in the same conference. Oh, hey, straight down by Patterson, who has six. I'll tell you what, I think he likes seeing me on courtside because this guy's playing like a PT peer, not like a 10-point scorer. Hasn't missed. He's really got the chance. He's doubling up on Miller now. Miller steps through. Lewis, though, reaching in to get a hand on the ball, and Miller wants to know where the whistle was. They had three people get a piece of Miller. Guyton, another three. I'll tell you, this guy can flat out shoot the three, can handle the basketball. He is becoming one of those special players in college basketball at the point guard slot. Bombs away for the Hoosiers, who have doubled up for Dean Miller quickly back with his first basket. Bad Miller's got to forget about the referees and just play basketball. Can't be concerned. Brady going to the press after the first five, six minutes, as is his custom. And nice pass. comes up with the turnover. Open from the corner. Robinson rebound Miller. That's what Miller's got to do. Take advantage of his great size. He's tough. Eddie Hightower was warning both guys. He's talking to Patterson and he's saying something to Miller. Just play basketball. I'm going to watch a little jumper, Dave. I'm going to watch the offensive glass with so many games to one. Miller at 6'11", operating inside, shooting better than 60% from the field. Wow, you can feel the electricity here, can you? Comes the energy of your body, absolutely. I got goosebumps when I walk through this place. Technical. Katie, uh, teed up by Ron Zetcher, who Katie was working on three or four minutes ago when Cornell got hurt. Doesn't shock me at all. I mean, Gene's been very animated, which he usually is, but he's been really boisterous on that sideline. Uh-oh, look at this. Now Bobby Knight going to get in the picture. So let's just play. Watch out, he don't get a second one, and Gino be in that locker room. I'll tell you what, who would want to be a referee? You earn your cash with these two guys on that sideline. You earned those bucks tonight, Tom Rucker. Tom, an outstanding principal over in the city of Detroit. Michael Lewis to shoot the tees as the Rucker Knight confab continues. Lewis, an 85% free throw shooter, has the first. Yeah, outstanding free throw shooters. Both clubs really shoot well on the line. Purdue leading the uh, Big Ten and Indiana right behind him. I mean, he's all fired up. He's looking good, though. Look, look at the Sartorio. He's splendid. I mean, this guy is dressing now. He's becoming an old GQ. Well, we'll see if uh, his early raging pays off with any calls his way. They only led... On the first two points of the game, free throws by Brad Miller. They've trailed ever since. If you're going to get a technical, getting it early is suddenly going to watch the five-second count. They wanted the five-second count. Lewis in the traffic. Cardinal to the deck. Gets it and calls time. 
How big is this game? Brad Miller was telling me before the game, he said, our players, coach, they arrive a lot earlier. They immediately take their clothes off. I went in their locker room. They throw them to the floor. They can't wait to get the uniform on. And he said, you just can't wait to come out of this floor. Well, they love Brian Cardinal here. Citizen Pay going to the deck to get the steal, first of all, and then get the 20-second timeout call. Well, barely a month left, if you can believe that, before tournament time, but there are still hundreds of extra games available from the Big Ten, the Big East, ACC, SEC, Conference USA, Big 12, and more. Hey, people that don't think the Big Ten has good basketball this year is kidding himself. Michigan beats a Duke. You take a look at some of the games by Indiana, and you look at Purdue playing Carolina right down to the last minute. There's quality play in this league with the Illinois. Iowa in a little bit of a slump right now. But there's six teams that have a legit shot for the big dance. All alone, Cardinal. Tough as they come. Back after his own miss, doesn't miss again. Tough as they come. He's a member of my old Rambo team. You put a guy like that and a guy like Will Jahowski, they play so hard. Going to a half-court trap. Trying to take him to a trapping area. Robinson. And Wrecker went to the deck, but it's Mayfield who comes away to Gary McClay. Can't get the layup, and Purdue's already missed a ton inside of five feet. And a three-on-one situation did not convert. Only problem for Indiana, the turnovers. Yeah, Purdue hasn't turned the ball over yet, I don't think, tonight. Gladness coming up short on the hook. Just the second missed shot by Indiana. Six turnovers, and they've gotten only ten shots off, but they made eight. Cardinal got a good look inside. Stepped right into the gap of the defense, Cardinal. His dad, a trainer at Illinois. I'm sure Lon Kruger would like to have him in an Illinois uniform. Oh, is Katie working that sideline tonight? Oh, is he animated tonight? Former football player. For 10 shooting to 7 of 22, 32% marksmanship on Purdue, and they trail 22-16. Well, I think the big story right now in that Big East will be tomorrow night down in Mountaineer country, West Virginia and Connecticut. And who might be doing that game? Well, Mike Tirico's going to be there, and I hope to get there myself. It'll be my first journey as an announcer down in Morgantown. There goes the trap right now. Cardinal on the wing of the trap. A lot of size. Charlie Miller's come in, his feed to Luke Wrecker, who rims out to three. Charlie Miller can provide some scoring. Came in with a big-time reputation out of Miami, Florida. They thought he was going to be a really a special player. He's had some good moments against Ohio State this year at 13 points and 10 rebounds. Larry Richardson has also just come back in, called for the foul. He's from out of Florida as well, gives him another athlete. They don't really have a shot block or a guy inside that can really give you a special look on the interior. A oh, high low. Cardinals lob intended for Miller Robinson there to take the deflection. I know one thing, Dave, I'm getting a lot older. Michael Robinson's dad played for me. The violation, violation, didn't get it in quick enough, trying to get the timeout too late. His dad played with me at the University of Detroit and then transferred because we had John Long and had a good career at Southwest Missouri State. That tells me I'm putting years on. <laughs> Austin. Another miss inside by Purdue. The tip goal goes. They're really getting on the offensive board, and they are aggressive out of that trap. They're using Miller in great size at the point of it. Brad Miller hit with his second personal. Brad Miller is refereeing too much. He's got to play basketball. Brad Miller's a talented, experienced player. He's worrying too much about the striped shirts. And he's got to just play some hoops. Good move by Gene Caddy, putting him to the bench. Let him calm down a little. He's got two already, as you said, Dave. They're going to see this relentless pressure. That means guys like Guyton and guys like Wrecker, they should be able to handle this. And you've got to make them pay. When they're going to extend defensively like this, you've got to try to create opportunities and get the numbers your way. Ed Hightower over for discussion. 
Purdue, ever since they put the press on, Vic, fighting their way right back, they have a 10 to 2 run almost three minutes. I'll tell you, they're really charged up and a lot of energy out of that pressure. Well, they don't change uh, either clock. Still showing 10.46 to go. Guy with See that Cardinal defending on the ball. Cardinal's going to play the baseline right now. Another big guy. They used a big guy on a base. Changing their look. Cardinal giving all the signals. He's like the quarterback right there. Talk ball was uh, kicked. So they'll let Lewis inbound it again. There's two seconds and expired and it's kicked again by Cardinal who celebrates. I'll tell you one thing, he gets this crowd. <laughs> they love him. They love the fact that he plays so hard. Some people have questioned his tactics saying, oh, the kid might be a little dirty. No way. I've watched him play. I want a player that's going to dive on the floor and hustle and scrap. Well, nothing that he does ever looks premeditated. He seems to be strictly a reaction player. Exactly. Air ball, Lewis. Eldridge breaks out, and Purdue with numbers, Robinson travel. Robinson from out of Peoria, Illinois. Same city that produced A.J. Guyton. Big-time scorer in high school. Broke his dad's records in high school, Michael Robinson. Has really matured, has learned what work ethic is. He's a changed player from last year. That is Purdue's first turnover. And quickly going to work offensively, Rob Turner out of Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, that's a no-no. Bobby Knight's going to be very upset there. Nobody gets back in defensive transition. They get the simple layup. First two by Gary McQuay. He can run. He can really fly. Three straight on. Turner. Richardson in position for the tip, had it deflected away to Robinson. Turner had a big game earlier this year against Kentucky and then went into a real, real slump. Austin left alone for three. Richardson wrestling Cardinal. There's nothing, the floor. nothing dirty about that. That's just hustle. That's pure hustle that coaches talk about every day in practice, about giving your best. Ed Hightower says it is Purdue ball. I think it's amazing. I feel so charged up here. I can't get over the electricity here. I mean, it's a tough for the people to feel it like we do, Dave, sitting here at courtside. Brian Look Cardinal, it. the only player I'm aware of where the, uh, Florida the sports information staff actually keeps track of those and updates them game by game. I would be curious to know what Wojciechowski has, little Wojo, down at Duke. Now called on Richardson, open three. Alan Eldridge has really improved his range. Had five threes the other day against Wisconsin. So when you've got guys like Eldridge and Cornell and Robinson who can score, and Austin, you got a good, solid perimeter game. They're really trying to stop Rutgers' driving ability. First Purdue lead since 2 to nothing at Mayfield will be called on the perimeter matchup with... A.J. Guyton, his first. How good was Guyton last year? Scored over 400 points, over 100 rebounds, over 100 assists. Second IU Frosh to ever achieve that. The first? Isaiah. You better believe it. Maybe the best little man ever to lace him up. It was interesting. I got up close with Chris Myers. He said, I would go to Indiana again because what I've learned from the general has helped me in life. Out there, this time on the three, Turner's rebound, chased out by Gladness, who has come back in for Richardson. Wrecker, after the look at the three, turns it over. See, that's what they're trying to stop, his driving ability, his ability to get into the gut of the defense. Eighth Indiana turnover. They had them all up, and they cost him the lead. Three won't go. Cardinal can't, even with that dive, come up with the loose ball. At the other end, Turner on a terrific leave by Lewis. Nice pass by Michael Lewis, a fiery player, a competitive player. There he is driving into the gut of the defense like a 3D man. Drive, draw, and dish the rock to the open Turner. Turner, a Juco player, as you said a little bit earlier, he and Gladness give him some athletic ability. Austin on the move, rattles it home. That Austin came out, he's shooting the rock. He's really fired up. Great hustle by Austin. We've got to appreciate that effort. Waving all the gold. This 
place is rocking and rolling tonight, Mr. Barnett. They've only waited 364 days for this game. Keep that in mind. <laughs> NBA tonight coming your way Tuesday through Saturday nights on ESPN2, bringing you all the latest from the NBA with Jason David Aldridge. He's like the Bible out there. He seems to know what's happening big time. Hey, you talk about Indiana. Everybody says, oh, what a slump. Well, let me tell you this. 1992, they go to the Final Four. 93, they're number one in America all year until they lose Allen Henderson, and they get beaten in the Final Eight for the right to go to the Final Four to Kansas. And you ready for this step? In the 90s, they're the winningest program in the Big Ten in the 90s. Cardinal has gladness land on him. And something else they do, my friend. They have players that walk down the aisle and receive that diploma. 98% of their uh, four-year players. That's why it was so great to see Dean Smith honored last night. As I said, he won. He graduated players. There was never NCAA violations down at North Carolina. 7.59 and a half. It's Purdue by one. A Brian Cardinal kind of game if there ever was one. That's by one. Dick, you talked about the Indiana stamp on the Big Ten in the 90s. 93, the last time they swept this series. From that point on, Purdue assumed the place of dominance in the Big Ten, and they three-peated. 94 through 96. That's unbelievable. The last team to three-peat, Dave, was Ohio State with Jerry Lucas and company back in the 60s. That's why also when you talk about Connecticut, they won three in a row in the Big East. And when you can step into a big major conference like the Big Ten, the Big East, or the ACC and win three consecutive regular season championships, that is special. Three and three in the NCAAs. But I know Gene wants that one journey to the Final Four. Might be this year. Austin's miss, boarded by Turner. That's something they have down in Indiana. I was thinking about this also. Bobby Knight's won 716 games. Now, I'm not too good at math, but if you subtract 716 from 879, you come up with 163. That's the magical number to overtake Dean Smith as the winningest coach in the history of the game. How many years, you think? 163. He can do that in eight years. Oh, that'd be below average for eight years I to know. get to 163. I mean, but do you think he would hang around that long? He really? told me today, he said, there's nothing I love better than coaching Dick. He said, I absolutely love coming to the arena. I love practice. I love teaching. He said, I get frustrated. I get aggravated. I do some things I sometimes regret. But the bottom line is, I've never really wanted ever to hurt a kid because I love kids and I love the fact of competing. That was from him this morning. Turner missing the front end as Indiana arrives in the bonus after the Mike Robinson foul his first. Tell you one thing, he's not coaching for money because he's got a few bucks in his life. Eldridge can't get the three-pointer. Miller, the long rebound. Miller's got to watch that he doesn't get his third. Cardinal on the low block, a big size advantage, and uses it over record. That is really good basketball IQ right there. Taking advantage of your size. Going inside, posting up really strong. Well, this is almost a spectacular play by Robinson. Couldn't keep it in bounds, though. Gene Cady, certainly a guy the players really admire and respect. As you look at his record as we talked about, but he's such a hard worker. has such a passion for what he's doing. Oh, he's on a backcourt. That is one of the over and back. They're really checking record tough, not letting him get a good look at the basket. Luke Jimenez on, the sophomore from Redwood Falls, Minnesota, making his first appearance. Came here as a walk-on. His dad, very close friends with Bob Knight, during the scholarship. And for the first time tonight, Dick, the shot clock is a factor. It's down to three for Guyton. And with one on the shot clock, he earns the free throws. Wow. What a way to earn that opportunity on the line. Gene Candy can't believe that foul. What a poor play defensively. Look at record right here. Look at him denying the ball. See right here, freeze it, freeze it. Right here, freeze it. We see right here. Everywhere he goes, this has got somebody in his face. Everywhere he goes. I mean, number four. He's got somebody with him. Look, right there, Eldridge says, I'm not gonna let you get the ball. I'm not gonna let you get the ball. Right in his face. 
First and two for Guyton. Luke Recker, an early three, and has only tried one other shot. They are doing a terrific job of uh, completely erasing him from the offense. Yeah, they're trying to take him totally away, not giving him any good looks at the goal, because he was so brilliant in that performance down on Bloomington. But he's such a special kid, plays so hard, has a lot of energy. Indiana almost perfect from the line and winning the first by six. 21 for 23 they went in that first game. That's amazing. That's their first miss tonight. Gary McQuay banks it in. Wow, he kisses it on the glass. I mean, a left-handed stroke. Looked like Digger's stroke. Digger's left-handed. That's how he used to shoot him down a rider. Did he off bang the glass. Him straight away like yeah, that? Yeah, right off the glass. I did research on him and prepared him <laughs> for the old-timers game. Guyton against Robinson. Both these clubs really get after you defensively. But what a great job of getting the ball inside. Good post up play right inside by Gladness. Gamble defensively does not pay off for Austin. Three point try. Miller just three of seven for the year. Robinson and Record Miller had a piece. Comes away with it. Indiana can tie it or take the lead here on the Guyton three. Guyton's got a record for making most threes consecutively in the Indiana career. That one tipped out. Nice job by Indiana's Robbie Eggers, who has been bothered by leg ailments all year. Two on one for Austin, right in, and foul by Gladness in second. Austin drew the contact, but he should have dropped the bounce pass. Right, right here. Freeze it right here. See, right here. Gladys is the guy they're going to be looking for. He's going to try to get good post position on the inside. Number 30. Watch him right now. They're going to over free. They overextended defensively, and he had the little drop step, and he sealed, and he went to the basket. Right in that situation, we saw Austin get fouled on. He should have definitely thrown the bounce pass to the cutter. I felt like a little kid last night, Dave. I still have not been able to unwind. I mean, in a room last night, sitting down, rapping with guys like Tiger Woods, John Elway. I was like a little kid running around, wanting to get pictures and autographs. Tyra Banks, Kathy Ireland, did they uh, enter into the conversation? <laughs> at all? Uh, I was looking at Tiger and Elway, man. I was all excited about Johnny E. Austin again not shooting particularly well for the second game in a row from the field against Indiana, but he's got eight points. That first matchup, Indiana was up one at halftime, and then went on a little spurt in that second half, ended up winning by six. Jimenez out of the trap for Turner, as Indiana gets pretty deep off the bench. Turn the starters on the floor right now, Wrecker and Gladys. Turner can provide some points. He has scoring ability. Cardinal fouled, celebrating the capture of yet another loose ball. Yeah, 23 against Kentucky, 19 in the first half, Turner. And they lost that heartbreaker to the Cats of Kentucky, where I think Tubby Smith's doing an amazing job getting maximum out of a team without a star player. Robbie Eggers call for the foul. Brian Cardinal, a 6'8", 230-pound threat beyond the three-point arc. There aren't a whole lot of those, but he's made over half his threes this year. Not yeah. enough to, to rank nationally, but still not many in the country making 50% or better on threes. Exactly, and he also had a great game as a freshman against Indiana. Had a brilliant game with 27 points as a freshman. There he is with five points, three rebounds. Gene Cady has a philosophy about that. He says, you know, guys like Cardinal and certainly Wrecker, as freshmen, they don't feel the pressure as much as some of the guys that are a little bit more experienced. They come out very loose and they're able to put on some big points on the board. Interesting philosophy. Now they're going to they're gonna go to a face guarding pressure right now. They're face guarding here, pressuring on a baseline. One, two, one, one set. Going over the top. Brad is waiting for Lewis to get back. Oh, bad pass. Threw it away to Cardinal. Bad pass. And then he fouled. Oh, he set a three-pointer, but he's going to earn the two now. You don't want to throw that lob pass against the trap. I mean, that's a no-no pass for a lob diagonally. And the coach is talking right now to Gladys about it. 
He's speaking to him about the entry pass and how to attack pressure. So you don't want to throw the slot. Freeze it right there. Freeze it right here. He's going to try to throw a lob. You don't want to throw that pass. That's a no-no. But he has no outlet because the trail man is now one step behind to reverse the basketball. Not aligned properly right there by Indiana and attacking the pressure. Roller makers up by seven. They have made all seven of their free throws as Larry Richardson replaces Gladness. Frank Kendrick played with the Golden State Warriors. Wears a ring from the world championship team. Gladness goes out with his third foul. Indiana not a very deep team. They got a great recruit coming in next year, and I use the word great. The best in the state of Michigan, they say. Dane Fife said no to Duke. On the wearing Indiana uniform. They want to pick up that dribble. 6-0 run for Purdue. Indiana thought they had it ended, but it's an offensive foul on record. Well, record thought he had the lane to the basket, but it's the second time tonight that Purdue has rotated over and has cut off the driving angle. Here goes Luke Rimrucker. He's going to take it to the goal. But look at Cardinal. Oh, I don't know about being in great position right there. He got out, but I don't know if good enough to get the charge. They got away with one there, I believe, Mr. Barnett. I think Knight agreeing with you over there. Tenth team foul. They'll be in the double bonus from now on. Four and a half and change to go first half. From ten back, Purdue, eight up. Traveling, Austin turns it over. This is a big possession right now. They got to make something happen right now offensively. Talked about Frank Hendrick. He said, uh, I woke up at 4.35 this morning, and I was ready to play right then. Knows all about this rivalry as a player, as an assistant coach. It's been involved in a little bit of controversy over the summer. Driving some recruits where the NCAA is taking a little bit of look at that situation. All alone. Can't get it. Lewis bailed out, though, by Rob Turner on the offensive glass. And Turner, six points off the bench, all six of Indiana's bench points. Well, that's what they're hoping for, to get some offensive productivity. Talking to the people here at Purdue, they think minor violations at best secondary as they tip in right there on the offensive glass. And they don't believe that's going to affect them anyway because they've done a thorough investigation here at the university. Eight for Mike Robinson. He's really provided a spark off the bench, Robinson. I'll tell you, you got to have those roll aid specials. Guys like Jason Terry down there in Arizona. People like Melvin Levin at Cincinnati. You think about guys like Evans down at Kentucky. I love Evans. And you got to love James Posey at Xavier. Three, the rename Mackey Arena. The birdcage. Wow, look at that there. The birdcage. Number 35, Mr. Cardinal. Hey, you talk about Gene Cady and success. Six Big Ten championships, five consecutive years to the NCAA tournament, 16 postseason tournaments. He also had great success at Western Kentucky in his short tenure. And his assistant there was the guy that was the star of stars last year nationally, won all the Coach of the Year honors, Clem Jem Haskins. Purdue living off what they have forced ever since they went to the full court pressure. The Indiana turnovers and outscoring of 10-2 off the Hoosier mistakes. Beggars with a lob inside for Richardson, who gets a nice roll on the hook and a foul called inside. As it looked like Robinson and Cardinal were both jockeying for rebounding positions. Little high low be on Robinson. Little high low entry there on the interior. There's a catch of the Gene stretching out. Hutchison Junior College was an assistant down at Arkansas with the triplets in 1978 when Arkansas competed in the Final Four. In fact, Notre Dame was there that year. Digger Phelps had a heck of a club with Kelly Trapuca and company. Robbie Eggers was uh, the guy fouled inside by Robinson, so he shoots free throws after the basket Eggers by Richardson. Eggers and Mandeville are kids that really they thought were going to give them a lot of productive basketball with size, but they've had some injuries in the case of Eggers and they just have not been able to sustain the kind of productivity that they've wanted from them from that bench. Vegas limited really all year by that, that knee problem. Still wears the wrap around the left knee. Yeah, he's been able to 
hamper his ability to do the things he'd like to do. Indiana gets a four-point play, and they cut the lead in half. Cardinal off balance inside. It's McQuay turned away. And here comes Indiana. Good rebound by Turner. Juco. Mike Lewis has got to drive a little bit. He's an excellent free throw shooter. One of the premier three free throw shooters in the league. Rucker with a rare shot comes up short. Nobody rotated back, but they missed the pitch out. They had a layup. Eldridge, a no looker inside, and Austin can't get it. Oh, no call. Can't get the whistle either. A walk traveling on Eggers. Little John Travolta Saturday Night Live. Little traveling music. Come on, smile for his jeans. Smile. I wonder who he's cheering for. I wonder who he likes. Goes up. Let's see if he gets somebody. Can't tell from that angle. Well, maybe a little hip. Katie thought so on Richardson. But it's the Big Ten. They allow a little contact. Oh, Big Ten, baby. It's the Midwest. Keep it at Purdue by four as we go under two and a half. First half. Get that motion offensively. Both clubs like to get good spacing. We always talk about. So he can't give a lot of help. Indiana State, man-to-man -man defense, principal defense for years. First time the shot clock's a factor in the entire half for the Boilermakers. It's under five for Mayfield. He lost it out of bounds. Touched by Indiana, two seconds to shoot. I tell you, when I think of Purdue and some of their great clubs, 1988, I thought they were super with Everett Stevens. And they had Troy Lewis and Todd Mitchell. Got beat by Kansas State, and Mitch Richmond beat them in a sweet 16, and that was the year Danny and the Miracles. Danny Manning won it all. Got off in time, but an air ball by Austin and the shot clock violation. Coming up at the half, we will hear again from Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps in the studio in the courtyard by Marriott Hatt. Razorbacks who are in action tonight at Georgia, following our action from Mackey Arena. Whirlers had it up to eight. It was cut in half by the four-point play. Air ball by Richardson, Indiana foul. Shot the ball a little too quickly there in that possession. you got to make a few more passes, which usually is a trademark of Indiana. There's Richardson on the baseline, trying to post against McQuay. A little too strong with the release. Indiana, year in and year out, has always been known for its motion game, good ball movement, player movement. I don't think anybody will ever achieve what he achieved back-to-back -back in 75 and 76. 36 and 0 in the Big Ten. Take it to the bank. I know in my lifetime we will not see a team go two consecutive years in the Big Ten unblemished. Oh, well, hey, to see uh, Michigan State with only one loss this deep into one Big Ten season is an eye-opener. They have been really a surprise. I think a lot of people thought it was a fluke back on December 30th when they came here to Purdue and they won that basketball game. But Tom Izzo and his gang have proven that they're legit. See, some of that Mariucci is rubbed off on Izzo, his best buddy. They're tight. The coach of the 49ers, they grew up together in northern Michigan. A little of the karma? Oh, Teddy, a lot of Rigatoni, those two guys. And Mateen Cleaves doesn't hurt either. First missed free throw by Purdue. All year have been shooting really well, leaving the Big Ten in free throw shooting. So just about everything they do offensively among the national leaders. 11th in scoring, 8th in field goal shooting, 7th in free throw percentage. Turned over on the trip by Richardson. Richardson really having a tough time on the inside. Gladness is three fouls. Really way big right here. There's Richardson trying to get to the interior. Now he's got a hook right there. Could have called him for a hook, but they get him for stepping on the line. With well, and scary Larry, in high because time. they just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Whatever he gets involved, it could be good, it could be disaster. And Hightower with the call. But he's trying. He's working really hard, and he's playing hard. You can respect that in a young man. Terrific rebound work by McQuay, who earns a trip to the strike. McQuay working the offensive boards. Some people think it's from Gary, Indiana. The home of the big ball, Glenn Robinson, that their 94 team was their best team. I want to say this now with a little break in the action. That club not only had Mr. Robinson, who was sensational in college, but they had Conzo Martin. We want to wish our best to Conzo Martin, who's battling cancer. And Conzo, I want you to know all the players and all the 
people in that locker room tonight who are all simply asking me to say to you how much they respect you and they're wishing you nothing but the best in your big fight, big fella. We'll all be praying for you. Heard him on a talk show here locally yesterday, and he sounded very upbeat. It sounded like uh, he thought he was going to beat it. He's put on a lot of weight again. Lost had lost a lot of weight and went through chemotherapy. He was a solid defensive player in that 94 club, but they ran into a buzz sword with Duke, and that was the year Arkansas won it all. And they're coming up next, and they've been really a surprise this year, playing really well. Coming up after this game, Nolan Richardson's club. They're going to try to trap. They're going to keep coming after Indiana. They're going to come after him. Guyton coughs it up the lead for Eldridge, who was out of bounds almost before he let that one go. That one really never had a chance. Not a really tough play right there. Never got the rhythm and the timing to make it happen on a catch. Indiana has more turnovers than baskets. 15 nice turnovers, 13 field goals, and they get turned away here again. Good recovery by Purdue right there because Indiana had a layup. Shot clock is off, 16 seconds. Five second violation. Tony Mayfield, to the absolute disgust of Gene Cady, turns it back over on a five second call with 15.2. I'll tell you, it's been a very intense battle as we anticipated. This can give him some momentum going into the locker room. Lewis, an excellent free throw shooter, should use some driving ability to get to the basket and draw some contact. Guyton on a long two. That's a big one right there. I'll give you a little lift mentally going to the locker room. A.J. Guyton comes up big at the end of the half. Early it was Indiana by as many as ten. Purdue came back to lead by as many as eight turnovers. The reason they've already forced what Indiana averages per game for the year. 37 at halftime. We check in now again with Chris and Dick. Dave and Dick, thank you. Tough to imagine a calm coach night after 15 turnovers in the first half. Purdue finally got the shooting going after a cold start. Well, don't forget in game one, Gladness and Wrecker combined for 48 points, 18 rebounds. And tonight, Gladness gets that third foul. He's on the bench. Wrecker's struggling. They also gave up 10 points off those turnovers. So IU struggling as the momentum swung back to Purdue. It's going to be a war in the second half. As always, coming up in our courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. In the meantime, highlights of Syracuse and Miami. Bayheim's team absorbs a loss. It is four at Mackey Arena. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Indiana up by as many as 10, down by as many as 8. They cut that to 4 as we get set for the start of the second half. 41-37 for Purdue. Dave Barnett and Dick Vitale. There's a lot of ways this game could go. If Indiana turns off the turnover uh, tap, they can uh, assume dominance again. They're hitting 58%. Purdue is not shooting well. Well, you know, 16 turnovers doesn't help. But I think really the story was the way they contained and shut down Luke Recker, who they've been living off. We watch Recker now with drive. Freeze it. See right here. Look at all the people that gather on him. See how they close off the driving angle? They don't let him get into this angle. They give help, and they're going to pop the ball loose. They've done a great job converging and collapsing on any drive by Wrecker. And we remember in that first meeting, we've talked about it. Diggers talked about it. He had 27 and 12 rebounds. Today he's got three points, and he doesn't have really many looks at the basket. That is absolutely amazing. That's over five-plus years. Purdue has lost only five times when they led at the half as they do here. Andre Patterson did play only six minutes in the first half. He made all three of the shots and disappeared. I know, really. Uh, he started off on fire, made those three quick buckets. See, I think if Indiana's to win today, Patterson's going to have to do some things on that baseline. Number one, he's going to have to score and give some rebound. Didn't have a single first half rebound. Takes it in hard here. Rebound comes down to Brad Miller. That was a good move by Patterson. Came out of high school ranks, rated one of the top five players in the United States. Miller, count it. I 
I'll tell you, the big fella, Brad Miller, goes right down to cut in the defense and gets a conversion and brings the general out of his seat. And he's going to the bench. There'll be a substitution here. A breakdown defensively by IU as you look at the stats right here. The Giorno first half stats, 58% shooting, and you're trailing because you don't get enough shots because you have too many turnovers. Yeah, 16 turnovers. You look at Purdue only shooting 35%, and that's not been the story their year. Patterson goes three for three, but just doesn't get many opportunities. Mike Lewis goes to that sideline. Knight upset with his defense in that sequence, not giving any help. Miller with nine on the three-point play, and it's Luke Jimenez who comes in after Michael Lewis's first foul. Bob Knight played all 11 in the first half. Record limited to just two shots so far tonight. They have done a great job in their game plan containing him. Patterson just begging for the ball. Couldn't have been more open and hits the three. I'll tell you, Dave, the kid can shoot the basketball. He can put it to the floor. He's just confidence level, I don't believe, is anywhere near where it should be with his talent. Ryan Cardinal backs out and answers with a three. I like said, anything you can do, Andre, I can do better. Super South, man. I can shoot the ball. As you said earlier, shooting 50% from three point range. AJ Guyton draws the block. Eddie Hightower with that ball. Early on, Gene Cady lost Jerron Cornell, uh, one of his top offensive threats, to a sprained ankle, and he will not return. They show me that his foot is just blown up like a baseball, and what a big loss that is. This guy's been on fire, averaging 15 a game this season, but he's been so big lately, had seven threes in a game. Jimenez all alone, he gets a three. Jimenez with the big three, great story, a walk-on. Came out of Minnesota, one of the world. Who's your uniform, and that was earned the scholarship. They're gonna play off the Austin, a four shooting first half. Cardinal, another three-pointer. Can't allow the big guy to stroke it. You gotta get in his face and make him put it to the deck. If you let him get stationary and square his body and get a great look, it's nothing but nylon. Rucker fouled a net if it's on Miller's number three. And I tell him, I knew big guy. Rucker got inside position. There was nothing that Miller can do. Take a look at Cardinal right here. Wide open. Squares his body. Gets the good look. And that is trickling the nets. Nothing but nylon with the rainbow jag. Wrecker's fourth point. Oh, I really like this kid. Watch him in a workout today. Has so much enthusiasm. I love people that play with an excitement, that enjoy playing. I can't understand how players can be angry wearing a uniform. You see some guys, they pout, they sulk, they whine, and you wonder why. Should be the greatest moment in their life that they can compete and put that uniform on. They learn after they can't put it on any longer. Now, wow, what I missed. Nice look. Miller. With gladness on his back, and William Gladness picks up number four. I tell you, the big foul on Gladness because they're limited on the inside, but they do a great job reversing the ball and getting that 45 degree angle and that entry from the wing where you can't get. There it is. There's that entry. Gladness loses sight. See, he didn't see ball, you man. You must see both. You must see ball. You must you see man. And there's a little bump and a little hog by Miller and Cardinals. I like that big fella. And now he's going to see the bench. Miller with another three-point play. Gladness, who had 21 points in the first meeting, departs with twice as many fouls as he has points in the second meeting. Also had a big game against Kentucky. Was active on a baseline until the latter stages of that game come up empty with a couple of shots. Good execution there by Mike. Oh, shoot the little jump shot. Now, see, Rucker should have pulled up at the foul line and shot that jump shot. Cardinal almost with the deflection. Traveling on Richard Mandeville. They're starting to really get out of sync right now, Dave. It's getting to a danger zone. They're only down eight, but they're starting to get out of sync. This crowd is alive. This is one of the great arenas, just as it is for that guy down at Bloomington, Indiana. We've got one L at home this year for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Indiana averages less than 16 turnovers per game. They're uh -oh. already exceeding that. Katie's got the jacket off. 
He smells a run. He's stalking the sideline. He's got one T already. You want to watch out. You want to watch out. We'll get the second gun to rock and roll. Oh, you better be careful. A little extra rope, perhaps, <laughs> allowed the head coaches. <laughs> He's going to have to get Mike Robinson out. He just picked up his third. Wrecker will take the quick pull-up jumper. That's the, one, that's the one I was talking about earlier. He's got to pull up and shoot that little jumper. He can make that all day. Austin loses it in traffic. Got right into the gut of the defense. Pull up. Don't have to always go right to the goal. I tell you, they're being patient right now with Gene. Sometimes your reputation precedes you and you get a situation where these officials are being very impatient on that sideline. I mean, he's very animated. He's a great coach and I love and admire him so much about him, but he's very animated. Guyton went cross court to Patterson. Oh, big play, big play. Big play and they count it. You see that energy again out of record. Possession right here. This is what you got to get out of your senior, out of your leader, and he knocks it down. Cardinals second foul, and Patterson, just the way he started the game, he made all three of the shots first half, comes out second half, Dick hits a three. Chance for a three-point play here to cut it to three. Well, we said a little bit earlier that they have to definitely get a productive game out of Patterson to have a chance to win here today. I think of Indiana, I think of the greatest team I've really enjoyed and admired and watched play. That was in 76 with our own Quinn Buckner, who I thought was one of the real prototype point guards, was such a leader. And then you had Wilkerson defensively and Scott May and Abernathy and Benson on the interior. And if May doesn't break his arm, they go back to back. I really believe that in 75 and 76. Patterson, as you saw, yet to get a rebound. He is the rebounding leader for the second straight year. Average is better than six. The one first first tonight. In fairness to Patterson, he get a whole lot of time on the floor. They get a lot of PT. Eldridge hanging in midair and puts it down. Seven for Allen Eldridge. I'll tell you, Allen has really improved as a player. He's really added range to his shot, consistency to his shot, and he's always been able to do what he demonstrated here. The floating drive. All alone, Wrecker can't get the three. Got a Mandeville with a push. No doubt about it. Right in front of the high tower, a little push. Not going to get away with that. Indiana lacks one dominating, active, athletic baseline player for being really an outstanding team. Was that player Jason Collier? No, Collier's more a low post player, a guy that's very stationary on the inside, but certainly a good college player, a guy that maybe sometimes a divorce is better for both people. I mean, we see marriages that end like that, Dave, and you sometimes have good people that just can't seem to get it done together. Georgia Tech might be the place for them. Austin turning the corner hard. See, I like about it, coach, and I want those active guys that can 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, very active, like you'll see in the next game with an Arkansas. People that can come out and pressure you and trap. I think the game has gone that way rather than to the typical low post center of years ago. That foul, Luke Rickers, third. Foul's becoming now a problem here for Indiana. Foul shooting, not a problem for Purdue. Bobby loves this kid. I'll tell you something. I spoke to him today about him, and he just sings his praises. This guy, on the other hand, he sees it as nightmares, because twice, once each the last two years, Chad Austin had game-winning shots for Katie overnight. Shocker there. Purdue by seven here, 57 to 50, 15 41 to go, second half. That would really be a surprise because they've been so good in the Atlantic 10 this year, Mass under Bruiser Flint. Big minutes for Luke Jimenez tonight. Andre Patterson playing possessed this half after sitting most of the first half and a nice look up top for Richard Mandeville's first points. Well, Mandeville's always been able to shoot the ball, but it was a great look by Patterson showing again his versatility. Dribble penetration, kicks it out for a big guy. Purdue after the 4, 35% first half, had five straight. 
Boston pass wrecker for the pull up from 15. I'll tell you, Purdue does a great job of catching the basketball, squaring, and going to grip, triple threat position and putting the ball to the deck. They're going to hold down here, Eddie Hightower on the baseline. Fouls can become big in this. Wrecker playing with three, glad this out with four. Purdue, a very deep basketball team. Very active, very deep. They got that rematch. They're going to be playing at Michigan State. They, as a coaching staff, Dick, I think, are the least surprised that the season that Michigan State has had. Katie's telling his guys before that first game, look, nobody picked them high. Get that out of your head. They're as good as anybody in this league. And he got their attention, and the Spartans then later got their attention. Well, the team fleets played so well for them, and he's their catalyst. Mayfield pulls up, gets a very friendly roll. Mayfield gets right into the gut of the defense. Good point guard backup. See, they got some good, strong people they can bring off that bench. But they go McQuay, Robinson, Mayfield. This crowd is alive. What a lift. What an adrenaline lift you get out of this crowd. I mean, you can just feel it. These fans deserve so much credit for the success of this Purdue program, just like they do down at Bloomington. Picks up that defense. Wrecker, a no call. Patterson for three. Rebound, Cardinal. Letting them play a little bit here in the second half. Purdue enjoys its largest lead of the game at nine. They like to attack with that dribble. Their guards will catch and try to dribble and attack. See, try to attack right in a gap and kick it out. Dribble penetration. Robinson, who was near perfect off the bench in the first half, and here comes Guyton the other way. Very quiet, A.J. Guyton, for a long time. The Guyton and Rector got to step it up offensively. I thought Guyton missed Rector right there with a little bounce pass. But he had that angle. Guyton yet to score after nine in the first half. Austin gets past Jimenez to fouls him. I'll tell you, Dave, they really are attacking the basketball. That's their game plan right now. Very aggressive with Austin and Eldridge attacking the basket. See, so take a look from right here. There goes Austin. He's going to attack the basket. He's got to rotate over. See, Bobby Knight can't like that design of his defense. They didn't rotate over to that baseline. I used to love it when they had that club that won the national title. They got guys that can really play on a defensive end. And they had a player from out of Peoria that was an outstanding defensive player. A lot of people don't remember him, but a very important player in Indiana, Chris Reynolds. Duke Recker leaving with seven points and three fouls, replaced by Rob Turner. Turner's got to give him some point production. Like I said earlier, he's capable of scoring. Had 25 in that game against Kentucky. His last seven games, he's 20 for 37. Before that, he's 8 for 27. As you look at record with foul trouble, my friends, he's going to be a special player in the Big Ten. The type of dandy of the conference, along with maybe Cole and Ricky Davis of Iowa. Austin, a nice hand. Six of six free throws for Chad Austin. They really work on a free throw line, both these schools. A uh, step to the ball. Andre's got a step to the ball and meet the ball. Can't wait for it to come to you. 18th in the uh -oh. turnover. Miller rejected by Mandeville, then foul. Miller stayed with it. He stayed with it. He's an excellent free throw shooter. There's a lot of emotion on this club. There's a lot of hugging, squeezing, talking. The bench is jumping with joy. They've had their tough times in the postseason. This year, you got the Big Ten tournament for the very first time. Jim Candy told me today, he said, I'd like to see the league go to a 20-game regular season form. And I said, you can't be serious. There's 16 regular season games now. And I said, we should all play each other twice. The round and, rock. And no tournament. Wow. No, no. He said, have the tournament. And have the tournament. Yeah. A lot of coaches going back and forth on that idea. They, they obviously exactly. voted for it when it was uh, discussed as a group, and some have uh, rethought whether that was a great idea. Well, the guy across from us right now, the general, is certainly not a big advocate of the postseason, but I think the postseason tournament is going to be a plus, not only obviously financially, but I think it's going to help in recruiting. I think the visibility, the explosion they'll get at that time of the year is going to be nothing but a positive. They'll be getting six teams in the postseason, and right now with Illinois and Iowa, 
On track, possibly as well. Look at that bench. They jump with joy. These fans are right in it. These people live for their Boilermakers here. Got a resurgence in football. The Cowboy Joe. Rob Turner knifes in. Tip. Oh, by great Patterson. Tip. Great tip by Patterson. Andre with the big left hand and tip. First rebound all night for Andre Patterson, ending an 8-0 Purdue run. What a big bucket that was. So Katie has the luxury of resting his uh, top two seniors, Miller and Austin. Well, see, he has that luxury, and he gets productivity out of the guys to step on the floor. They're a deep team. Double-digit lead down near the 12-minute mark. Mayfield rejected by a Juco teammate of his from Tyler, Texas last year, Turner. We're going to see Andre Patterson as Turner comes in. Watch 45. Watch 45. He's going to the offensive boards. And there's the left-handed tip with all fingertips. Good three-pointer around it out by Allen Eldridge. Patterson with the rebound. See, right now, Guyton's got to look for some shots. He's been very quiet. Eldridge has been right in his face. Hartman goes down to the deck. See, Guyton's got to look for some shots. A rattle. Yes, sir. Tom Ruffin with the ball. Guyton only six shots tonight. Three out of six. Dick, he needs more. No question. They're going to get some screens for him out of that motion game. 19. Both Purdue and Indiana have some folks to watch in foul trouble. Nobody in deeper trouble than William Gladness, who has four. Wrecker has three. And that's a big loss for Indiana because they're so limited along the baseline. Gladness is such an important player. 21 in that first matchup, as you said a little bit earlier, and was such a factor in that big win over Purdue down in Bloomington. And won seven out of eight. You talk on the other side, Purdue's won nine out of ten, so you got two clubs that are coming into this game that are really on a high right now. Only loss for Indiana was to Michigan State, where Bobby Knight really sings the praises of Tom Izzo's club. Loves their athletic ability. Miller and Austin returning. Pass in the deep traffic by Mike Robinson, but an Indiana foul. They really get bailed out on what should have been a Purdue turnover. Andre Patterson over the back for number three. And that also puts the Boilermakers into the bonus. Indiana had a great victory over Michigan when they blew them out when Michigan was playing well by 18. So it shows that they're capable, especially down here in Bloomington. Hey, Michigan, Michigan State will be a big game next Tuesday. I mean, those two hook it up. Michigan's got a W. The only loss for Michigan State was to Michigan. But they lost the game to Minnesota, who struggled all year, but has one of Bobby Knight's favorite players, Sam Jacobson. He told me he really loves Jacobson. I guess, I don't, you know, it's easy to see why. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's not much in his game not to like. Jacobson, Minnesota at Iowa Thursday on ESPN. Charlie Miller fouled as he hits the follow away. Well, you know, he could become big for them. He's very athletic. He can score. He can points on a board, and they need some point productivity. Gene's got the jacket back on, very relaxed. He's in the National Junior College Hall of Fame. He's done a great job internationally as well. Coached a lot of international basketball. You see the fadeaway jumper by Miller. Tom Rucker out of Detroit. They mentioned in Detroit. Those Titans definitely belong in the NCAA tournament. They beat Michigan State. I got to sing the praises of my former school. Perry Watson's doing a great job with those kids. And I'll tell you one thing, they've only got three L's. And whether they win their conference or not, they belong in that tournament. Well, they're almost state champs of Michigan. Well, they, yeah, they only lost by one to Michigan. Look at that good execution. Robinson, who just picked up his fourth personal, the lead back up to 10, 67 to 57. See, Robinson knows how to provide that instant offense you like off a guy off the bench. He has a great scorer's mentality. Rob Turner off the back iron. Miller just reaches in and rips it away from Charlie Miller. Oh, what a great, oh, it was a great look, but it brought the house down. Austin had that good look, just didn't get the bounce pass through. Charlie can't get the three tip in. That's two spectacular tip ins by Patterson. And both with the left hand. Both with that left hand. Comes in with that great tip. It's a day. 16 points for Andre Patterson, who played only six minutes in the first half. 
Ten points second half for him. Eldridge can't get the three. Robinson. And here comes Guyton for Indiana. Time they hope for another run. Halfway gone in the second half. Down by eight. Guyton. Terrific screen by Patterson. Great play right. They better get a T.O. I think he needs a T.O., baby. There it is. Gene Kenny calls the timeout. Yet they also 22nd one. Indiana with two big plays by their experienced players. Patterson with the tip and the drive to the basket by Guyton. They're right in this game. Well, it. tomorrow night, as if you don't know, a Big East ACC doubleheader on ESPN, beginning with number six, UConn, visiting number 17, West Virginia. Miguel Catlett's club really has been playing outstanding. They ran into a bus saw in St. John's on the road the other day, but they got an underrated player in Damian Owens, and that matchup with Owens and Richard Hamilton is playing like an All-American. That would be my choice right now. If you had a vote for player of the year in the Big East, I think it's got to be Hamilton. To the victor goes the spoils, and he has been sensational with Connecticut winning. You know, West Virginia's never beat. That's the only club they've never beaten in the Big East. Brad Miller. Can't allow a big guy with his touch to sit in the post that low, catch it that deep, and expect him to stop him from scoring. Well, that matchup in the pivot has been a push. He and Patterson each have 16 points. Cardinal from behind Charlie Miller, and that's his third. Well, Luke Brecker showing another dimension to his game, his passing ability. He likes to come to that foul line area and think pass. I think he's got to think a little bit more offense and pull up, shoot the jumper, but that was a good look right there to Miller. And there's the foul by Cardinal over the top. Can't believe it. I tell you, they're very demonstrative. What's the word? Demonstrative. Demonstrative. Oh, wow. Help me out, Fowler. Come on now. <laughs> I tell you, was he threaded out last night? In fact, our boss, Steve Bornstein, I heard this. He said, Chris, I love your threads. And he got them done by a special designer. I mean, that is big time, Digger. Oh, got to go all out for the Espies. Charlie Miller, who... We're talking about freshmen making big-time contributions in this rivalry. His freshman year, 23 points against uh, Purdue. He's only had one or two games since then as big as that early contribution. Patterson sits down. Mandeville returns. They've cut the lead to six at 69 to 63. Yeah, I just think they're giving him like a two-minute rest. He's not going out because he's not playing well. And Purdue going cold again from three. See, right now, this possession is big. You got Patterson out, so certain guys got to step up. One's got to be Guyton. There it is. A.J. widens his way around three white jerseys. I tell you, he is a tremendous talent. A.J. Guyton's got to be an all-Big Ten performer. He had 31 twice last year against Michigan and Minnesota as a freshman. This year, he's had some 20-point games. Austin. And again, they can't get a tray. Three out of 14 by on the arc for Purdue. This is out of bounds to Purdue off Mandeville. I tell you, Mandeville really hustling now. Look at A.J. Got now. A little shake and bake. Look, he freezes Gardner. And he blows right by him. He freezes him with that little dribble, that little stutter, that little shake and bake, and gets to the rack. I'll tell you, Mandeville and Edgars have not hurt them today. They're doing what role players are supposed to. Oh, they missed Brian Cardinal. was wide open for a layup. Eldridge right into the uh, Give it basket. Up. Of Give it up. Up. Austin and Rucker, who touched it last, are a foul. If it's on Rucker, it's his fourth. Big turnaround because they got a two-on-one, and Luke's got his head down, see? Oh, there it is. The ball gets deflected, but it was a half second too late making that look. He's certainly one of the premier freshmen in America. Four fouls on Luke Wrecker. Luke the Rim Wrecker. His uh, numbers stick almost identical to those of A.J. Guyton, who was last year's Big Ten freshman of the year. He's very athletic. I mean, he can really rise. They got a nice nucleus there on a the perimeter, especially with the arrival of Dane Fife, who's as tough as they come. A very fierce, competitive guard coming from Clarkston, Michigan. I mean, he's the real deal. They just got to find themselves some body on the inside who's athletic, blocks some shots, can run, and they're going to be a very good team next year. Tony Mayfield hits them both. Back up by six. The record showing at 6'6", six, six, they're going to handle the ball. Initiating their offense. No 
pole inside as Turner rattles home a three. A big three. That's a big time three by the Juco. Remember the Juco's were great to Indiana in 87 when it was smart and it was Garrett. But it was Steve Wolford with that beautiful jumper that sparked him to the title. Cardinal fouled as he turns the corner on Charlie Miller. I'll tell you, stay tuned, people. These eight minutes are hitting, are heating up down here, David. They are heating up. He's got to get Patterson on the floor. They need his scoring on a baseline. I think you see maybe one more possession, and it'll get Andre Patterson in. He's been solid tonight. 16 points. And he's a great kid. Nobody can question that. Great kid as a person. Indiana still hitting well over half their shots. 53%. Purdue still under 40%. 39% to be exact. One reason they continue to lead, the free throw shooting has been superb again tonight. Let them play a little bit in the second half. Thirteen minutes to go, but Indiana slowly chopping it down. I tell you, the big guy's been very active. Brad Miller on the inside of the second half. Brad, 16 points, eight boards for Brad Miller. He forms part of that dynamic experience duo with Austin on the perimeter and Miller on the interior. See Patterson back, just like we anticipated. They got Cardinal playing them. Oh, great fake. Up and underneath Cardinal. That's big time. I mean, that's a big time play right there, baby. I'll tell you what, that kid's got big time offensive skills. He's got 18 points, and the 13-point lead all but gone for the Boilermakers. They started this half hot, seven of their first eight, two of ten since. Inside again, Miller. Great look right there, great execution. Gene Candy with a good call, and his club takes advantage of a great size on the interior. They've only lost four games. Cater says when we lose it's because we're not patient enough to get inside to Miller. This time Mandeville gets inside on Miller. Now Mandeville does a great job to get free inside, but it was the great look, and Patterson showed his passing ability from up on top. He has played a sensational game, Andre Patterson, offensively. Limited time, scoring big, 18 points. Boilermakers again, not with uh, Jerron Cornell at all since the early moments when he sprained an ankle. They really miss him from beyond the arc where Miller lets that one fly. Yeah, that was a big loss because he's been their scintillating shooter from the perimeter and better than 50% recently from three-point range. Seven shots in a row have fallen for the Hoosiers and Guyton pulls them even. That's great execution, A.J. Guyton with that penetration as Austin with the answer. I mean, this is a great college basketball environment, a great college game, great rivalries, two big-time coaches. I mean, how can you want more to this? Can you want more to this? Can you want more to this? This is incredible. What great electricity. Nice look. Turner. And another rebound for Brad Miller. I tell you, Miller just goes snazzing right there and then hugs that basketball. They had hit seven straight shots. Austin. Austin stepping up big. Indiana might have to think of a timeout. Austin, the last two possessions. 18 for Chad Austin. An Indiana killer throughout his career. Two late shots to win each of the last two years. The answer this time from Andre Patterson. I'll tell you, Andre Patterson has got that stroke in touch. He is keeping his club alive. He's not letting them get away. Nine for 13. 14 points, second half, 20 for the game for Patterson. Miller again. Fouled again. That on Mandeville is third. Mandeville can't handle him inside. They're going to have to get some help with him playing behind to cut off his driving angle. And he's an excellent free throw shooter, so you don't want to put Miller on that line. And that is the double bonus now for Purdue. Which Steve. for the evening, Dick, is 21 of 25 free throws. I mean, that's amazing, and that's what they've been doing though, basically this year, leading the Big Ten, shooting about 80% for the season. 
I mean, you look at these guys. I mean, they don't have too many weak links on that line, including the size of Mr. Miller. 78% shooter. Last four games, 85% as a team by Purdue. Record back with four. Replacing Turner. Get ready for a great finish, baby. UMass regaining a margin of two at Duquesne. I tell you, when you look at the Big Ten right now, there are six clubs that stand out versus the others, and those six, I think, are going to get shots to play in that big dance. They had six last year that got a bid. Illinois has done a heck of a job long Kruger this year with a team that doesn't have a big player inside. Look at this guy. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, maybe that's when I come. I had him against Duke last year. He was unbelievable. I had 39 to beat the Dukies in the Garden. Tonight, he's been sensational. It's my first time with them this year. 22 for Patterson. Miller thought for certain he'd been fouled and looks up, can't believe no whistle. Guy can go at Patterson, should shoot the basketball. Oh, Rucker says, what about me? Rucker can't get a three, and Purdue with McQuay coming down with the ball. See, I would go right now, Guyton and Patterson, a little two-man game. This crowd is standing now. It's a live year, baby, in West Lafayette. We got a whole lot of record. Could be all. Could be gone. Might have got a tough break right there. With the whole lot of loop record. The general sitting on that sideline. National champs. 76, 81, 87. Final four, 92. Developed coaches like Mike Krzyzewski, David Bliss. There's a look trying to get over the top of the screen. And there's the contact by Rucker trying to get over that screen, and it's bye-bye for the Diaper Dandy. First time he has ever fouled out in his college career. He departs with 20 fewer points than he had in the win January 18th. Don't worry about this kid. He'll bounce back. He'll bounce back. He can flat-out play. There's no doubt he can play. You know, I was mentioning guys like Krzyzewski and Bliss. They were on a staff in 75 with Bob Donawal, Bob Weltlick. Weltlick now in South Alabama. Donawal at Western Michigan. What a staff that was. He's at BMOC. Big man on campus down at Bloomington. Luke the rim wrecker. Look at Miller. Look at that pain. Look at his face. He plays hard, though. The big guy loves to compete and win. Mike Robinson can't get it, but then McQuay with the steal. And look at Austin. Austin in traffic. Austin loves to attack the basket. Look at his strip again. Twice. Too hard. Robinson fighting for it. Foul. I mean, they all hiss with Indiana in that sequence. Indiana standing around watching. No doubt about it. The Hustle Awards got to go to Purdue in that sequence. Two times. Not once. Not once, but twice. There's the drive by Austin. I'm going to watch him keep the ball alive. Now look at Austin comes back, strips it out of Patterson's hands. There's the offensive rebound. And there's the contact and a foul, and everybody goes to the deck. And it's first and ten, we go up the other way. Austin almost played his huh. way out of his shorts on that sequence. Oh, I thought I was going to be tired here tonight. The adrenaline in this crowd has got me so energized, it's unreal. I'm just trying to figure what would you be like on more than two hours. <laughs> wow. He was very relaxed today at the shoot-around in general. Likes his staff. New staff he has with John Trelor and Mike Davis, who played at Alabama. I look for Mark Godfrey to be named the head coach at Alabama. If he's not, I know he wants the job badly. It'd be a great choice there. He did a super job at Murray State, played at Alabama. Ed Miller back, 19 points, 9 rebounds. Replaces Gary McQuay. McQuay's one of those kids that keeps the ball alive, very active on a glass, good legs, good bounce. Remember, if Katie wins, he becomes the winningest coach against the general. He's tied right now with Judd Heathcote with 17, going for number 18. All the emotion of Indiana Purdue from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette. Game.
game, 81-78. Hey, for all Duke Carolina, all that build up, better game here. Well, I tell you, so competitive right now, really getting after each other big time. And this game could go to the last possession. See, Gaiden Patterson going to step up big right now. This crowd is alive, and it's going to give this club a big lift for Duke. Cardinal up too tight. Just about in Patterson's jersey, and that is four on Brian Cardinal. Foul shooting so big, both clubs excel. Oh, Patterson, Car he might have leaned into Brian Cardinal in that possession. I tell you, we've witnessed the performance tonight offensively of Andre Patterson. It is so hard to believe that he is not one of the premier players in the Big Ten. Well, the eternal secret about guys with talent is, and that's what makes coaches gray, or I guess makes coaches ball sometimes, is why don't they always, why don't they always play at a peak level the way Patterson is tonight? That's really difficult. You want to try to get into the sidekick of an athlete. So much has to do with confidence. And today he just feels on every possession that he's going to score. That basket looks so big to him tonight. But he's never, he's made every big play when they've had to be able to get back in the game against now he's got the challenge of playing Miller Miller's got that great size gonna slide inside against Patterson so he's gonna slide inside and dump in for the post play right there gotta get some help gotta get some help oh great reverse and open three for Austin one of the few threes that Purdue has nailed tonight oh Dave what a super job of executing by Purdue a clinic of reversing the basketball Turned it over again, Eldridge. And they did a great job defensively. Uh-oh, this could hurt. Oh, Miller stripped by Patterson, but foul. And on Andre, that is his fourth. What a great job they did in that last possession with the reversal after the entry to the post. We're going to watch this right here. See, it starts with right in the post. Freeze it right here. See, it started by here, but it's going to go this way, baby, for the three as they reverse the ball. And there it is. Square gets the great look. Miller slow rotating out. Doesn't get up in his face, and they knocked down a big three. That three-point shot, what a momentum builder it is. Uncle Mo is here in West Lafayette right now. 20th point for Miller, one more to make it Purdue by six one. after Indiana had cut a 13-point lead all the way down to one. Audi Knights lost the last four times in a row here in West Lafayette. They get a timeout. Down six. There's still plenty of time to go. Lost four to five to the rival here. Definitely a PT tier. The last couple of minutes is only three-pointer of the night gave him 21 for the night. Well, he's been driving, but they did a great job of executing here, reversing the ball. And that three was a monster. You talk about a backbreaker. A big, big lift. Chad Austin, senior leader, comes up big, stroking that three. His brother Woody used to be able to stroke it here as well. Luke Rucker's gone, fouled out with seven points. Gladness, Patterson, each four. When you talk about big possessions in a game, Indiana is faced with a big one right now. Gladness on the floor, four fouls. Looking to go to Patterson. Miller checking him. Turner back, Patterson fought three, pulls up, gets two. A season high, 26 points, 20 in the second half for Patterson. I'll tell you, he's been brilliant. A brilliant performance out of Andre Patterson. They needed a bucket and he came up big. Now he's got to come up big defensively against Miller. He's going to play off from here. But Miller's going to want to give the ball up and then slide to the inside. Now see, managing the clock, taking some time off. Oh, nice penetration by Eldridge. So, you know, one thing that really hurts when you're trying to come back against Purdue is the way they excel on that free throw line, as you've alluded to all night long, Dave. This is Lewis's third. Eldridge, the best of all of them, 89% for the year. Wow, that's great when you've got people on a perimeter who are going to handle the rock a lot late in the game that they can convert on that free throw line. 
Triple shooters always get the roll to come their way. Good the Rock touch. has a way to come their way. The brick layers, it hits and rolls and it rolls off. Eldridge, best game so far, 16 in the Alaskan final against North Carolina, which Purdue almost pulled out. They lost that in the last two minutes. There he is, excelling at just as good as a basket, baby. Putting pressure on Indiana now with every possession to score. Under two, Purdue by six. Gladness. Gladness. Little touch of his own. Well, he should be rested. That's the one thing. Physically, he should be really rested. He's sat a lot of minutes in foul trouble. Indiana answers again. Now let's see what happens here. Can they come up with a stop? Trying to get that high-low back screen. Such a great job screening. You've got to communicate when you defend against Purdue. Cardinal spins. Blocked by Gladness. Out of bounds, though. Purdue will inbound with 15 to shoot. That was a great play by Gladness with four fouls. A little rejection on the inside because Cardinal had the open lane to the basket. Both these teams, these kids are leaving it all on the floor. Every bit of energy, enthusiasm. Cardinal backhands it home as Gladness can only stand and watch because of four fouls. Well, see, with four fouls, you can't play like that this late in the game. you got to go out and try and challenge people. Cardinal wanted it and made the big play. Inside to Gladness, rejected, fouled. Miller has four. Miller over the top. He says it's Miller time, baby. Referee said no. Let's check in quickly with Chris Fowler. Well, Dave, as soon as we're done in West Lafayette, we'll get it to Stegman Coliseum in Athens, Arkansas, closing out three games in six days. They've been hot. They're taking on Georgia. We'll get you right down to Athens when things are wrapped up in West Lafayette. Back to you guys. And William Gladness, just a 50% free throw shooter, misses his first. And yeah, this is big. How nervous are they? Take a look right there. Thinking on every play. Indiana extended defensively now. We near the one minute mark. AJ Guyton's got to put some pressure on that basketball against Eldridge. You got to come out and challenge Miller now. Catch from standing with the basketball. Got to bother his passing lane, kick his vision away. See, they're stretching out to their delay game. Hoping that if you foul, they're going to convert because they're so. Superb on that line. Tipped away. Patterson picks it up. Patterson oh, fouled by Eldridge. Andre Patterson making all the plays here tonight. Trying to carry this club on his back. Back to Bloomington with a W. Now look at this right here. Eldridge handles the ball, but Patterson strips him. I mean, he strips him. The big guy, and he draws the contact. He's been a PT peer tonight, this guy. He's been absolutely marvelous. Oh, in the second half, he has been at that level that you mentioned in the uh, NIT performance against Duke. This is pretty close to his uh, career pinnacle this second half. No question. And he missed a big free throw right there. Every play. Look at this. They're trying to get the foul. Look at him. He's like a cheerleader. Look at Miller. He wants the foul in a big time. That's going to be a hunt of a game coming up next. Brad Nestler, Larry Conley. I know Brad told me he really likes that Arkansas team. Indiana again settles for one of two at the line, down 437 seconds. Going to go to a trap. They'll look over the top, look diagonal, find open people. See the spread in the core. Oh, but almost walked. Spread in the core. That really hurts putting these guys on the line. Trouble right now in the red uniform. Excitement in the white uniform. Indiana hoping to pull off its first season sweep of Purdue since 1993. Also, they went the last uh, Big Ten championship. They went 17-1 that year, and they probably would have won 18-0. They lost in overtime. I did the game against Ohio State, but they played without Allen Henderson. Jimenez for Gladness. Yeah, they're going for ball handling, and they're going for a little bit more on a perimeter right now. They begin to three. Austin, seven for seven on the line. Eight for eight. Tough to win when they go to the line and they convert like Eldridge and Austin and this whole day. And they love it here. They love it. They love their ball makers. Final 23 
seconds when we come back to West Lafayette. When we came on, basketball, certainly a religion. In Indiana and Purdue with a six-point lead with 23 seconds to go. Set to celebrate what would be their fifth win in the last six games in this series. Six of the last eight. And Gene will become the winningest coach ever to compete against Robert Montgomery Knight. The Hall of Famer as he could post his 18th W, the most ever against Knight. Hoosiers looking for the three. Guyton over Robinson. Oh, he got it. What a big three right there by A.J. Guyton. It's a one-possession game. It's a one-possession game. That's a big-time trifecta right there by the Super South. Got to try to get the steal now. You don't get it quickly. Can't allow him to take time off that clock. Knight tries to figure out how to pull this one out with 12.7 remaining. Guyton keeps him in the game. Dick Barnett, Dick Vital, 12.7 seconds to go in back the arena. Purdue clinging to a three-point lead. Cut 2-3, 5-3 by A.J. Guyton, so Knight's still in the game. Well, right now they're going to go to a face guard, full court pressure, try to come up with the steal. Remember, it's so difficult to win there, the stretch against Purdue, because of the way they excel on that free throw line. Shoot 80% as a team. But right now they're going to try to get the steal. If they don't get it quickly, they got a foul, because they cannot allow a lot of time to be taken off that clock. And remember, Austin right now is 8 for 8 on the line. They're going to use Miller as a release guy here. They want to throw the ball up higher. He'll set a screen. Robinson, a long. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. They can steal. He can nail the three. Turner. Oh, there he is. Oh. Miller with the rebound and 5.4 seconds to go on the foul. What a great job defensively. They face guarded. They forced the lob pass. They make the steal. And they come empty on the trifecta, but had a good look by Turner. And now it gets down to the foul line. It's as simple as can be. There's the steal. He makes like a great defensive back. I mean, look at the agility. I mean, he makes like the Heisman Trophy winner, baby, with that steal. And then they kick it out. And the foul. And right now, right now, you see the pain on his face. Rob Turner came up empty. They got to hope for a miracle that he goes 0 for 2 on this line. Brad Miller's only missed two all night. Nine out of 11. 79% for the year. That's pretty good when you got a big guy that can stroke it like Miller can. All he needs really is one. There it is. There it is. Arkansas, Georgia coming up immediately. Great effort, but there's no moral victories in his closet. I can tell you that. He doesn't think, think about that. What a great performance by Andre Patterson. Kept him in the game all night long. As Lionel Richie will sing all night long, baby. Season high 27 from Patterson. Nothing like the foul line. We talk about the foul line in special situations. Shows right here at Purdue. And this crowd loves it. This crowd loves it. They're smelling the W. They're smelling the W unless there's a five-point play in their arsenal. They're not going to foul. They're not going to foul. Hi, everybody, along with great...